Welcome back to Tales Arcane, where we talk about D&D, TTRPGs, and fantasy storytelling. In this video, I'm going to share with you the system I use for overland travel in D&D. If you don't want to just use fast travel, but you're not really sure how to keep extended travel sequences interesting, I think this approach can really help. By the way, if you want to support what I do here on the channel, I have a Patreon where I post encounters, adventures, homebrew settings, battle maps, and a lot more. And whatever tier you join, you get access to the Tales Arcane Discord. Thank you to everyone who already supports me over there and who makes this channel possible. Now, let's talk about my system for overland travel. Many GMs run travel almost like teleportation. The players wrap up their business in one location, declare their intention of going to another, and a few minutes later, they arrive. The DM might describe a few details of the journey, the landscape changing around them, the weather changing overhead, but at the gaming table it only really takes a few minutes and then the players arrive at the new quest location and things start moving in real time again, the travel sequence is over. If that system works for you and your players, then you're all good, but here's how I do it. In the first part of the campaign, maybe the first third of a long campaign, I include an encounter or even a small adventure for every one or two days of a journey. Uh, especially a short journey, I'm usually going to include some kind of encounter for each day on the road. Then towards later parts of the campaign, maybe from about halfway through the campaign onwards, I start to introduce uh, fast travel options in world fast travel options and that's going to help when the stakes start to rise and we want a sense of urgency now the players can zip from one location to another using the teleportation network that they opened up or the airship that they got as a quest reward early on players probably don't know what the ultimate goal of their quest is they're getting used to new characters they're getting used to a new world and there is yet to be that sense of urgency that they need to rush off and prevent the apocalypse that's the best time to take travel slowly let's imagine that the players have wrapped up their adventure in a small village and then they hear rumors that a few days away there's a town where a cult has staged a coup and taken over the, the local populace. The players decide they want to go and investigate and find out what's going on, so they set off on a two-day journey. For that two-day journey, I'll plan two encounters. One will revolve around combat and one around roleplay. After a quiet day on the road, the players get ready to camp after their first day of travel, and at that point, a merchant approaches their campfire, asks if he can sit down. We then enter a roleplay sequence in which the players can barter or trade some items, and in which they can ask the merchant for information about the town they're traveling to. The merchant just came from that direction, so he's got interesting information about the cult. The next day, the players travel on. Clouds roll in, rain starts to patter down, and an old man appears by the road, asking for their help. It says his granddaughter has run off into the forest, and he asks them to come and uh, help find her. Of course, it turns out it's a trap. The old man is an oni in disguise. He's working for a hag who lurks in the trees a little bit off into the forest, and they're uh, setting ambushes for travelers. The players enter a combat encounter with the hag and the oni, they eventually uh, defeat both and go into the uh, hag's cottage and there they find some useful items that they can take with them. They continue on and uh, after an uneventful uh, long rest they wake up the next day to find that the town is just before them and uh, we probably end the session as they arrive at the town. You're not throwing random travel encounters at the players for every day of travel on the road. A 1d6 bandits attack, a dire wolf spawns in. Rather, you're approaching travel sessions the same way you would approach any D&D session. You're crafting unique, individual encounters and NPCs that will be enjoyable for players to interact with, and which will give the players the sense that even in the quiet regions between important quest locations, there are unique stories waiting to be told. If the players are in a rush, they can speed through that interaction with the merchant. They can avoid asking him any questions. The next day, when the old man approaches them on the road, they can just say, no, we're busy, and power on to the town. The whole travel sequence could be over within 15-20 minutes, but from my experience, early on in a campaign, that's not how players play. A lot of the time, players are happy to stop and smell the roses, to engage with the world around them, because whatever strange story might be unfolding on a quiet wayside stretch of the road is probably as interesting to them as whatever story awaits them in the next quest location. It's still early days. Now, as time goes on and players level up, the stakes are going to start to rise. The BBEG might start to come into focus, and players aren't going to want to spend as much time traveling from place to place. They're also going to get to a higher level, which means that you're going to have to start introducing unrealistically powerful monsters and enemies on quiet stretches of road, which kind of breaks the immersion. So at that point, as the players start to get a bit more powerful, you start to introduce uh, in-world fast travel options. 
and I say in world because we're not just saying oh yes where once you would have uh, had lots of encounters in that journey you now just speed through it and there are no encounters instead we're saying there's actually a reason you can bypass the journey altogether the players perhaps make an ally of a wizard who has an interconnected network of portals across the realm maybe they defeat some pirates and get their ship or their airship and are now able to speed through the skies untroubled you might still want to run the occasional uh, you know high level encounter in the skies a dragon attacking a crack an attack on the ship, but the important thing is the players are now being given options to bypass the extended overland travel sequences. In spirit, it's a bit like Skyrim. At the beginning of that game, you don't have any fast travel options, and you're just wandering from place to place, but the more you travel, and of course as you're traveling, you're leveling up, you're getting more powerful, the more you travel, the more you open up fast travel options. And so by the later stages of the game, once you're kind of bored with the travel aspect, and you want to just zip to the next location, you can now do that, because over time, Time, you've opened up a network of fast travel locations. Now there are some steps you can take during your campaign prep process before the campaign begins that's going to make this all a lot easier and it's going to help you come up with ideas for those uh, daily encounters on the road. But before we cover those steps I do want to talk quickly about today's sponsor. Welcome to this sponsored content segment of the video. This is an intimate moment where you and I just get together and talk about sponsored content. And today we're talking about Describe. It's an online platform that provides resources for GMs, and I think there's two things it does really well. The first is their Opus Library, a huge collection of TTRPG music, ambience, and sound effects. And as GM, you can layer together multiple tracks to create a very immersive experience for your players. Maybe you want a thrilling ocean battle with stirring music, roaring waves, and clashing cutlasses. Well, you can just go into the library, search for the tracks you want, drag them over, and now you can fade them up and down as you wish to. It's great for in-person play, but it's also really good online. Your players can all listen to what you're doing live through a browser link. The second thing Describe does really well is flavor text. They have a library of more than 10,000 pieces of pre-written text that you can read at your table to add immersion and detail to any scene. If you want to vividly describe a battle between two ships, you can just look up ship battle, find the one you want, and you're good to go. If you want to try out Describe for yourself, you can head to the link below this video and you get a two-week free trial. But if you use coupon code TALESARCANE, all one word, all caps, you get an extra week week on your trial, making it a three-week free trial. Thank you to Describe for sponsoring this video, and thank you to you for hanging out here in this intimate moment we call the Sponsored Content segment. When you're planning a campaign, create a map of the initial starting area, the county or the island where the story begins. You don't have to have the whole world mapped out, just the initial zone where the players are going to be traveling, and then cover that map with a grid. Each square or segment of that grid is going to represent uh, one day of travel on foot. Obviously, if your players are on horseback they can travel faster so as a rule at my table I say that if you're on horseback you can cover two squares in one day I don't know if that's how real horses work but that's the ruling at my table next you want to draw lines between all of the major settlements and landmarks on the map these are the roads and these are the roads that the players will likely be traveling along you can even reinforce this by making off-road travel take a bit longer Maybe it takes two days to cover one square. Now, in each square of the grid through which the road runs, you want to pepper small landmarks, locations, points of interest. A wayside tavern in one square, a roadside graveyard in another, an old ruin in a third. And you don't need to know what these landmarks are. You're putting little dots and names on the map, and these are going to act as inspiration later on when the players set off from one location to another. If you're worried about travel sequences taking too long, remember, you are the master of this world. You can design a map, which means that the players never have to travel more than two or three days to get to the next major quest location. I love creating quite small, densely populated maps where there are a lot of different towns and locations, but the players are never going for that long on the road before they reach a new kind of quest hub. There are always going to be big, exciting adventures to tell in D&D. There are always going to be worlds to save and BBEGs to defeat, but there is so much fun to be had in small stakes, interesting encounters in between those big dramatic moments. The situation where the players just help out an NPC whose wagon got stuck and then they find that the wagon actually contains some contraband goods and they have to decide whether or not to loot the other way or maybe take a bribe. That's just a little random moment but it introduces an NPC, it gives players a chance to engage in roleplay and work out who they are in this world. 
and you miss those if you just rush from one place to the next. This system also gives the players a real sense of progression, as they're flying in their private airship at level 12 or 13, flying over the forest that they used to have to travel through on foot, they'll look down and get this sense that, wow, we've come so far. Once we were, you know, a, a band of rugged adventurers wandering uh, from one village to another on foot, and now we've moved up in the world. Now we can fly from one side of the world to another, and pursue higher goals, higher goods. I think that's a great way to show players that they're they're moving forward in the world, moving forward in society. Anyway, that is the video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to everyone who supports me over on my Patreon. And a massive thank you to Describe for sponsoring this and some of my other videos. If you want to get access to that extended free trial, you go to the link below this video, use coupon code TALESARCANE, all one word, all caps, and get that extra free week. And uh, I will see you in the next video.